Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 554. Our most frequent questions about laboratory tests. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin and we're going to talk about questions my patients have about lab tests and about how BioBalance Health orders labs, what labs we order, and how we interpret them. These, this is a big subject for us because at, at BioBalance Health, we look at a patient's laboratory values and their health history before we even make an appointment for them. And, and the reason for that is that I'm trying to save patients time and money so that I look at the lab, I look at, at their history, and maybe they need an extra test ahead of time, maybe they need to see another doctor ahead of time before we even see them so that they can come in and talk to me for an hour and then get their pellets that day. So we're trying to make it very efficient. We also want to make sure that patients really need our services. They really need to have hormone replacement and that we can actually help them. I don't want anyone to come in, spend their own money to see me because we're all we're a cash practice. You can get reimbursed for the consultation. However, it's still up, it's still money up front. And I don't want anyone to go home without a treatment plan, without something that is going to make them better. So it's my theory that we're saving patients a visit that where you would just come in and say, yeah, I, I, need, I need hormones. And I look at your, in front of you, I look at your history, I look at your, your lab, and then I say, or I look at, excuse me, I look at your history and I don't have any lab. So I can't tell you what's really wrong with you. Then I order lab, you go get it. And then you have to make another appointment for us to interpret it and do a treatment plan. So I'm cutting out that first visit. So when we order lab, it's very important. I'm answering the questions that patients ask us all the time. Now, the first question is, why do I need so many lab tests just to replace my testosterone or estradiol with pellets? Well, we usually order 18 or 19 tests, depending on male or fem- if you're a male or a female. And the tests are grouped into three different types. You want your doctor to know if you're healthy before they treat you, right? So I have to do a series of health tests to see if your kidneys are fine, your liver's fine, your lipids are okay. I, I want to make sure that you don't have some uh, autoimmune disease or diabetes that you didn't even know you had. If we find those things and we find some something like pre, pre-diabetes or diabetes, we, we actually treat it. Um, and you can always go to your doctor as well, but we'll help you treat those health problems at the same time as we replace your hormones. So it's very important for us to know you're healthy. It's very important for us to make you healthier or prevent a disease from happening. And we can tell that by looking at your health tests. I also need to know the health tests to see, basically help, help me decide on a dosage for you. So they also help me determine the dose of pellets that you'll need. The second type of um, testing is testing of all the hormones. So I don't want to just know about your estrogen and your testosterone level. I test every one of your glands. I test the most significant, the most important hormone from that gland that will tell me if that gland is working. So we test the pituitary, we test the thyroid, we test your adrenal, we test your ovaries, your testicles, we test your parathyroid hormones. And we have to know all of those before we can determine what dose you need and what is safe for you. And maybe you need other, hor- other hormones. Maybe your thyroid is low. You're, if I don't treat that, 
then your testosterone and your estrogen is not going to make you as healthy and as and and wipe out your symptoms like it it would um, normally. I mean, if I don't test, if I don't treat the other things, you're not going to feel great. And I want you to feel great and healthy. It makes me happy to know that you're healthier when when you leave or when you come back in three months than you were when you walked in my office. So that's my motivation. The last part of our testing, and see all of these have several different tests within them. Last part of our testing is I, I have to test certain things to make sure I am not going to put you at more risk by giving you hormones than you had before you came in. The whole idea is to make you healthier, decrease your risk of disease, decrease your risk of having a, a medical problem. So I need to know if you have some genetic diseases that might cause you to have too much iron in your system. Testosterone increases the iron that we absorb in our food. So if you already have too much iron, I have to fix that or treat that. And that requires me to diagnose the problem, which would be hemochromatosis. And then, so I'd name it, we treat it by drawing off blood or donating blood. And then we would also give you pellets because pellets are going to increase the iron absorption and increase your blood count again or increase your iron storage. So I look at the blood count, I look at ferritin levels to see if you have that problem and then test specifically for it. We're trying to make you healthier, not sicker. So that's one of the reasons. Another thing that we do is we check prolactin Prolactin is a hormone from your pituitary gland. It's the first hormone that increases if you have a pituitary tumor. If you had a pituitary tumor and didn't test for this, we might think you had menopause or you just had estrogen dominance or you weren't ovulating. Um, and for men, just you had low free testosterone and ED because it can make, it masquerades as these other things. I have to test the prolactin to make sure you don't have a pituitary tumor because that needs to be treated. And that's not something I treat. I send you to an endocrinologist for that treatment. And sometimes it, re it requires surgery. It does not preclude my giving you hormones, but it is something I have to know because I don't want to miss a diagnosis. So that's very important, and I won't do the lab test without that test on the very first time you come in. It's important to know whether you have that or not. So these are the things, the reasons we do 18 or 19 blood tests at the very beginning of your treatment. We do another follow-up uh, blood test because the next question is how often do you do blood? We don't do it every time we give you pellets, which would be every four months for women, every six months for men. We don't do it every time, but we do it before your pellets and before your second dose at four months. The reason is that helps me know if the blood levels achieved what I wanted them to achieve. Now, everybody's different, everybody's individual, but those first two lab tests are, are usually the same for every patient, because I start with one, I find out what's wrong, and try to fix it, and then I have to follow up on my treatment plan. Even if nothing was wrong, I want to make sure we do no harm. So I look at the second, uh, the second blood test, and that also helps me determine if your dose was right the first time. So those two are pretty big blood tests. After that, we don't test you for a year unless you have a problem. These blood tests, the next question is how are they paid? Basically, we have you put them through your insurance. If you don't have insurance, then we get a discount from the lab, we pass along our discount to you, and then you pay us You pay us for the lab tests. It's considerably less than you would pay yourself. And then we can get the results, and that does not, it's not so onerous. It's, I, I believe it's $300 or something instead of $1,500, or some, some labs charge $3,000 for this to your insurance, they don't get paid that much, but that's what they charge. And so we can knock it down by a factor of 10 so that you can afford it. Then after we've got you started on pellets, we have you on the right dose and your maintenance dose is figured out, we're treating your thyroid or we're treating your prediabetes, 
then successfully, then we just test once a year. And once a year, we test fewer tests than we did the first two times, but just a few less tests. So you can expect about the same cost or the same coverage once a year. We can even stretch it to one, once every year and four months if we have to, but we'd prefer to look at you once a year to make sure that that is, that you are healthy and that you are improving so we can make changes in your treatment plan if you're not improving. So those are the, those are the different tests, how often we draw them. And, uh, we also ask, those are lab tests. We, for women, we also ask for a mammogram, because I want to make sure you don't have breast cancer before I give, a, give you estrogen. Estrogen doesn't cause breast cancer, but it can feed certain types of breast cancer. So I don't want to, God forbid, make that mistake, because it can, it can feed a cancer that's already there. So we make sure that you're cancer-free. And for women who have not had um, a hysterectomy, we look at a pelvic ultrasound to see if your uterus is enlarged, has big fibroids, has um, a polyp in the middle, has an ovarian cyst or a mass, to make sure your pelvis is normal because estrogen can stimulate fibroid growth. Estrogen can uh, stimulate the thickness of the lining. And some people come in, they actually need to have a biopsy of their uterus because we nothing that we did. It's just something that was there. We found it. We send them to their gynecologist or send you to your gynecologist and have them do a biopsy or a DNC or clean out the, pol the polyp. Fibroids we leave alone and we treat you a little differently so that your fibroids won't grow. So it changes how we treat you. Once again, do no harm with your treatment and that's what we're, we're looking to do. We don't order ultrasounds every year. Uh, except in certain circumstances. But we do ask that you see your gynecologist once a year and just get the normal treatment. They don't have to do anything with your hormones, but just make sure your breast exam is normal, your pelvic exam is normal. It's very important to have that. And then pap smears now are every three to five years, depending on how old you are. So those are the tests we require. For men, if basically the rules on PSA have changed, but we still order a, a PSA before um, a patient comes in and then once a year just to make sure nothing has changed with their prostate. In general, testosterone replacement decreases um, the prostate size, decreases the, um, you, when a prostate gets really big, it can block urine flow. It usually makes that better over time, but we want to make sure it's better. And then the PSA tells us a little bit about the size of the prostate and whether it's changed since last time. So that's important to us for, the, for men. And uh, men should also see their internal medicine doctor while they're seeing us once a year, make sure that they don't develop high blood pressure or something else. And oftentimes we find the problem and send patients to their internist uh, to have treatment for things that we don't treat or to a cardiologist if we find that, that, that you have some kind of um, problem with your heart and arrhythmia, or if your cholesterol is high and you can't take statins, we order a cardiac calcium scan to see if you, that tells us in two pictures on a CT scan, whether you have uh, calcium in your vessels. And usually that would mean that you're, you have a condition that needs to be treated that might need a statin or something like it that doesn't have the same side effects like Zetia. And that you, we don't want to have somebody have an illness that they don't know about. You should know if your vessels are clear or if your vessels have plaque in them just to see where your status is. For us, it's important to keep you healthy. Testosterone and for women, testosterone and, and estrogen usually help keep your vessels clean. So, we don't want you to think that what we did caused your vessels to be worse. Usually they get better, but we, we want to know, and it's very important for you to know. And if you do have plaque, for a cardiologist to be hooked up with you so that uh, they can take care of you and make sure there's nothing else going on with your heart. We don't do that. We send you to, uh, we refer you to a specialist for that, just like any other doctor would. So last but not least, 
patients want to know why some of the ranges that I consider optimal or normal for a patient are different than the lab, the lab has. So first of all, for an example, the, um, the normal for women's free testosterone or active testosterone is on the lab test two to five for people who are in menopause or around two to five. We check, we actually compare you to young healthy women and their testosterone because any hormone that drops as you get older is, it would be average for you at 50 to have a, a, a low uh, testosterone level or low free testosterone, but that doesn't mean it's healthy. It's healthier to have the same testosterone level as you had between age 20 and 40. So we compare you to the free testosterone of a young woman. To give you an example of how this is used, I mean, this is, this is how all the anti-aging doctors or uh, people, age management medical doctors operate. We, we compare you to a, an ideal number. Uh, but there are other tests we do this with for bone density. When we're testing women, we don't test a 50-year-old woman Bones, de bone density against an, all the other 50-year-old women because everybody has some bone loss or most people have some bone loss at 50 and it gets worse over time. When we look at bones, we compare you to 29-year-old female. That's it. Just all women are 29-year-old female comparisons. So we're looking at bones that decrease with age and compare you to young, healthy bones. So in all of our hormone tests, we don't compare you to your age group. We compare you to healthy and young. And that's very important and very different than how medical doctors look at things. Basically, we're trained in, me in medical school to say, oh, yeah, menopausal, you have no estrogen. Okay, that's normal for your age. But it's not healthy. So that's why we don't compare it to your own age. There's several other hormones that that drop with age. One is growth hormone. We test IGF-1, and what they give you is a big range of all the people uh, that are your age. And that's how the lab determines what they consider their reference range. I compare women and men to 20 to 40-year-olds, and it's a much higher number, a much higher level of growth hormone because people who are 20 to 40 have a higher level than people who are 50 and up because everybody's growth hormone drops. That's part of what makes us sick. So that's why that's important. The lab, the lab says no estrogen's normal. It says that having your FSH and LH for a woman have it really high is considered normal. Well, it's considered average, but it's not healthy because then you have hot flashes all night or night sweats or you have anxiety attacks all day. Your face gets red in a meeting. I mean, you can't live your life like that. So that's not healthy. That is just average for your age. So we're looking at healthy normals, which means younger normals than our age. That's one of the reasons why we don't use the same reference range as we have, um, we see uh, on the lab sheets. Now let's go to thyroid. A thyroid test, when they give you a reference range, first of all, they're giving you a reference range for somebody who is not on thyroid medicine, who is male, and that's it. So all women are compared to men's normals, which are not the same as women's normals. And, you're com and if you're taking thyroid medicine, there's a different normal for you, but they don't put it on your, on your uh, lab sheet. So the doctor has to know that, that you're on thyroid medicine, and adjust the goal level or goal level for you so that he gets your blood work or your, your example. Basically, blood work is just a, a one point on, on a line of where you are compared to healthy. So he has to know the healthy levels when you're on thyroid. And he has to know the health, he or she has to know the healthy levels when you are not on thyroid. And the, then the sexual difference between men and women that we have different normals for TSH. The other, the other uh, issue with thyroid, 
is that when I was training, we developed normal blood levels of thyroid by going to a university and testing young, healthy um, women and men. And we would then use those as our normal T3. We, I test free T3, free T4, and TSH. So those levels would be obtained from young, healthy people. Your thyroid decreases as you get older. Um, and if you live in the Midwest, your thyroid's more likely to be low because we're in, in the goiter belt. We have a very low iodine level in water and, and ground and where we grow our food. So you shouldn't be compared to other people in your area, especially if you're in this, in the Midwest. And you shouldn't be compared to other people either your age or, here's how the lab does it, they do it cheaply. They take everybody they tested, and honestly, if you're going to the lab, usually you have something wrong with you. So you're probably sick. So you're going to the lab, you're getting your thyroid tested. You may even have low thyroid, high thyroid. Well, they just take all the thyroid tests that they did, they average them, and they decide that you are within the range of all the people they tested that year. Well, what I've noticed is the thyroid, the T3 and T4 have been dropping over time. It just goes lower and lower every year. That's not because healthy people have a lower thyroid level. It's because they're testing sick people. And when you're sick, your thyroid just kind of shuts down because it's trying to keep you alive. So that is not normal. The normal for T3... Free T3 is 3 to 4.5, and, and for both men and women, and the normal for free T4 for men and women is 1 to 2.5. That's what it's been forever. That's what I use as my, as my example. So that's just an example of why you can't just look at your labs and know if you're normal or not. You just can't. You have to interpret it. And hopefully doctors are listening, they need to know why those levels keep dropping every year. It's because the lab cheaped out and does not use normal, healthy, young people that should be tested who, who are, I mean, when you're young, your thyroid works, basically. So, and not tested in the Midwest because the Midwest has low thyroids traditionally. So this is an example of why we do so many tests, how we take care of people, why, how many tests we do, that we send it to your insurance. Um, we, don't, we don't take any profit from it. Or you can, you can get our discount and get a, a decreased cost if you have to pay out of pocket for your lab. And the other tests we do. We are trying to be very careful, do no harm, make people healthier by doing all of these tests and hopefully getting you back to health in this way. We, we usually spend a lot of time with you and your symptoms, but we use that and the lab together to determine your treatment plan. Thank you for joining us today. And if you liked this video or it was helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube uh, station. And we have that running below us so that you can find it and you can click on it. But we do this every week and we have different subjects and hopefully we're able to increase your knowledge about medicine and about your own health care. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.